WQAD News 8, this is WQAD This Week. Good morning, it's Sunday, December 4th. Thank you for joining us for News 8 This Week. I'm John Diaz. Over the past three weeks, we have brought you three parts of a News 8 special report looking at how communities are addressing a rise in violent crime. This morning, we have News 8's Devin Brooks' complete story for you. And later in the show, we'll sit down with Devin to discuss his report. We begin this morning, though, in Davenport. It's just seemed like it's gotten worse. We've seen um, levels of gun violence that we have never experienced before. We just want to make an impact, just not through gun violence, but all types of trauma. They was aiming to kill him. Gun violence. It can happen to anybody. Arthur Abbey is anybody. Uh, 26 years old when, when my life changed. I'm going to ch change Arthur ch trait that's in his throat. This scene. October 25th, 2017, changed everything. From the neck down. I woke up in the hospital, didn't know where I was at or what had happened to me. Arthur was shot five times, hitting his shoulder, neck, arm, and spinal cord. This thing is in my throat that holds the, uh, uh, for me to talk. With his mom by his side. They told me he wasn't gonna make it. Today, he's making it. But not like before. I didn't know I couldn't even move at first. Life now. I'm just gonna silent the machine. Requires 24 hour care. You're just cleaning the open hole that's in his throat. You okay? Yeah. As a result, the plea for safer streets is taking a new direction. I just want to provide help where I can. DeAmber Carter is with the city of Davenport. A lot of the individuals that we speak to probably aren't ready to stop what they're doing. This is how they live, um, and they don't know about a different lifestyle. She's been hired to run the city's new program aimed at tackling violent crime. Even if they don't accept services, if they take that message, put the gun down, tell their friends to put the gun down. It's called Group Violence Intervention, or GVI. And the message is simple. We want to see people safe. We want to see people alive, and we want to see people out of prison. But police face the opposite every day. You look at our officers, they're exhausted. Um, we've worked uh, a number of cases within the last, you know, three or four years. Gun violence is still, you know, leading the news uh, almost every night in, in, in every community. We've just learned that the shooting that happened near Hamilton Elementary School in Moline this morning was deadly. And this is what's left behind. Nearly 80 shell casings later found on top of the parking ramp. Just a few hours before concert, the 90s metal band Corn found with an apparent bullet hole on the side of its tour bus. As a community, we're mourning the death of a young man. Community leaders say they knew they had to do more when the violence started taking the lives of young children. One of those incidents happened in the alley right beside me last year. It's where a 12 year old boy was shot and killed while playing in broad daylight. All of that is terrible, but when a child is involved, an innocent person, nothing to do with it, certainly upset concern. And when you look at the numbers, it doesn't show the bigger picture. Going back to 2019 was the least amount of incidents in the past few years. Crime spiked during the height of the pandemic, dropped slightly last year, and since late October, 2022 is not fallen far behind 2021. And what do you say to residents, to some people who say Davenport isn't safe? I say I don't agree with that. I say we're safe. Are we there where we need to be yet? Nope. I stand together and proclaim that violence is not tolerated. The faded ones are people that died through gun violence. My son and his, um, a friend of his represent that they're still here. And while countless families grieve, the alarm is still sounding. That's how we know something's going on. Something this family is living with forever. <laughs> Things most take for granted, <coughs> like coughing or sometimes I'm scared to go to certain places. A feeling no one should have. It's sad. It's just kids getting shot. I still have young kids too. You know, I, I fear for them, and I really fear for them because we don't know who shot my son. A fear <laughs> that reaches any neighborhood. As kids are enjoying the day, people are going to the store and pets are outdoors. 
Everyone's on the move in the city of South Bend. It's known as the city of peace. These men are trying to bring that peace out on the streets. So we're here with uh, Goodwill, with GVI, with the SAVE initiative. SAVE is stand against violence every day. Our job is to eliminate your barriers yeah. and assist you in, in being a productive citizen. My dad's name, Juan Xavier Miller, murdered gang violence. For a long time, that's what the, that's our life, drugs, partying, and the gangs. As young as eight years old. I learned how to be a gangster from my mama. I didn't have a father figure. You know, my mom taught me how to run these streets. Those streets. When I realized, came to the realization that these King brothers don't love me like I love them. It's what David Miller says led him down the wrong path. Charges including robbery and breaking into homes, leading to being locked up as a teenager. We really can't help. And if there are no cost to you. Something police say they hope stays that way. We don't want to be putting sheets over bodies, knocking on mom's doors. Those are the things that we do not want to be doing. We shouldn't. This shows how it's been almost in the past decade, with the blue being those shot and red with what the chief was talking about. We cannot still have people having their babies sleep in bathtubs so they don't get hit by a stray bullet. Is it a problem? Yeah, absolutely. Anything above zero is a problem. And officials say it's not just men behind the crime. Leaders say there's been a shift, at least in the last year, where more women and young children are involved in the violence. They are getting younger. You know, 12, 13, 14 year olds. And the women. A lot of times they the one hold a gun by the man go shoot. Karen White and Gladys Muhammad are pillars of the South Bend community, being activists speaking out on crime. It's going to take the community coming together. Uh, it's an issue of giving them hope, uh, helping them to understand who they are, to love themselves. Or opening doors in life. We've literally seen grown men break down in tears and cry because this is the first time they've accomplished something. You need to have a reason why you're doing what you're doing. The city's GVI team offering jobs, education, and training through Goodwill. You've given everything, you've pulled yourself out. This has been one of the uh, most important strategies that this community has adopted. That also comes with expunging records. They're right there. You're able to get it right there. They're going to sprinkle you every time they see you. They're going to touch you. Um, that's what the power of it is. It's not some program you got to sign up for. They're going to come find you. They're going to come see you. Like they did with David Miller. GVI gave me a chance. Who says he was steps away from throwing away his life. A lot of them are dead in prison right now. But instead, nervous, he's with his kids, <laughs> has a job, and he's a clean man. Oh, man. <laughs> All of a sudden. But back in the Quad Cities area. And I heard a bang, 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 bang. Yeah, and somebody started screaming. The unthinkable. When we came out, there was a woman screaming to help. Please help him, please help him. With frantic calls. A bullet hit the cement step, and then the second bullet landed here. Those bullets are what's said to have no name or place. It could have went through the house. That was over the summer in Clinton. Muscatine reported another shooting a month ago. Police say teens were involved in this Burlington incident, and this was just after the start of the year in Galesburg. What else is in common? It's happening in smaller communities. With a major highway going through the community that is a corridor for criminal activity. But one way police are stopping them. The city of Comanche is rather large. With these devices that look like light posts. It provides us a lot more eyeballs on as to what's going on rather than having police stationed at every corner in the community. In just about every main intersection in Comanche, you'll see license plate reader cameras. You'll get a list that'll have all the plate numbers associated with them. Tracking what's wanted. We've kind of protected most of the in industry based on where they were, where we located the cameras. That can be key in cases like amber and silver alerts for missing people. The reason I kind of wanted to get them instituted here in Comanche was uh, the Briasia Terrell 
case. There were hundreds of volunteers and officers searching the area of Comanche because the suspect was believed to have been in this area. Had we had those cameras when that took place, uh, we definitely would have saved a lot of a lot of time uh, and efforts focused on this area. And crime is widespread. As we look here, since late October, just next door to Comanche in Clinton, it's reported three homicides and eight shots so far this year. Over in Muscatine, we've reported one person shot. In Burlington, our records show at least three people shot in 2022. And in Galesburg, four killings and 12 injured in shootings. You guys can be a catalyst for your generation to say something positive and more importantly, do something positive. A way Galesburg is trying to get ahead of more violence. You hear this from every community, in every community, right? There's not much for the youth to do. By reaching children while they're young. I get to help put my ideas out there. Through the Galesburg Youth Commission. They're like ambassadors to the city because most students in the city don't know who their counselors are or the mayor. Mayor Peter Schwartzman says change starts here. There are a lot of issues that we didn't even think of as adults uh, that children notice. Also include Costa and also the Christian. And around the table, those under the age of 18 are focused on developing the area and being a voice for issues facing the community. These are lessons that they're going to learn today that, you know, they're, they're learning and growing, but this is going to help them down the road. Later as they Our thanks to Devin for that report. Later on this week, we'll sit down with Devin to discuss common threads he found across the communities he visited and the hope residents have for the future. But first, after the break, 